having a strong statement, personal statement, is something where a lot of people, a lot of schools are looking at because. Doing my dance. Hey, I'm doing my dance. Don't mind me. I'm doing my dance. What's up, you guys? Sit down and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this Sunday. You could be doing anything else, but you chose to spend your Sunday morning with me. I really appreciate you. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe and like this video and follow me on Instagram at Adon and the PA. I have a special guest with me, you guys. Um, this is Dr. Donnie R. He is the director of Howard's PA program. Um, but I know him as Donnie. He's my friend. He is the reason, uh, kind of one of the reasons, okay? God is the reason. But that Donnie <laughs> helped me tremendously get into PA school. He wrote recommendation letters for me every year. I did not get it. <laughs> and then the year that I did get it. And I think that, you know, I'm really grateful to him for that. So Donnie is going to be sharing some of his tips and advice on how you can prepare yourself to get into PA school. Um, but before he does all of that, I want him to just kind of give you a little insight about himself outside of work, outside of Howard, outside of being a PA. So, Donnie, take it away. Tell these people about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Donnie Art. Yes, I am a great friend of Adana. Wrote every recommendation letter for her every year that she tried to get in. Didn't change much, but she got in. I got it. <laughs> That's um, what matters. <laughs> so we met through, uh, we met at church, um, and she found out that I was a PA. And one thing I can say about Adana, she persevered through everything uh, she was aggressive and that's you know some tips that I'm gonna uh, talk about about being aggressive and how to do that uh, but she was aggressive and uh, persevered and stayed faithful to the cause of what she wanted to do to be a PA but a little bit about myself so I'm from Louisiana originally uh, Grambling Louisiana so if you ever heard of Grambling State University that's where I'm from didn't go there went to Oakwood yes college now Oakwood University. I went to the university. OC, that's where I went. Oh, yes. you because you know we're a little bit better. <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, but yes, went to Oakwood. Met my wife there. Um, so we have been married 11 years. We have three kids. We live in Maryland now. Been here since 2008. Um, I, outside of work, love, love, love to play golf. Love to play tennis. I cook, um, play the guitar. Great cook, you guys. Amazing cook. Yeah. He um, had, actually, I, the one thing I remember, he cooked these fajitas for us this one time. It was so good. So, so good. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> got his little Spanish. Oh, yeah, I put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> but great cook. Oh, thank you. Uh, again, just these are the things I like to do outside of work because, you know, when you find out, Work can consume you and can overtake you. And some things that you don't want to do is bring that stress home. Okay. So find some outlets, and these are some of my outlets and things I like to do outside of work. Sounds good. I will keep that in mind when I graduate in a yes. few short months and get my first job. But um, before we get on to that, I want Dottie to just kind of get on in what he was doing, which was giving you these tips. So I'm going to get up out of here. I'm going to give Donnie the, the seat, the hot seat to actually talk to you guys and let you know all of his very, very important tips that will help you all prepare for your PA school um, journey and your PA school interview. So without further ado, here's Donnie. What was that? <laughs> I thought we were going to a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they in my space now, they in their place now. I just put them in their dirt, lay them face down. Y'all just borderline. I'm talking waste. Hello, everyone. My name is Donnie Yard. I am the program director at the Howard University PA program. But what I'm here to talk to you about today is uh, my tips, not. Uh, advertise for anyone but my tips and my advice on how you uh, a pre-PA student can strengthen your resume or your application itself or even just getting an interview because that is the first step is getting that interview to get into PA school so what I'm going to be talking about a couple of tips and things that I think will help put you above everyone else uh, the first thing that I would like to say is um, when I went to PA school, um, it was a really big emphasis on uh, patient care experience. Uh, many people such as EMTs or nurses 
looked at PA school as a second career. <clears throat> so they had that healthcare experience that was needed. And the reason they would like to have or like to see the healthcare experience is because the PA school process is a really rapid pace and they want to be able to see that you as an individual uh, are knowledgeable of the healthcare field and how fast it will be going and be able to adapt to those changes quickly. Getting that healthcare experience where it's volunteer or um, is paid is a big thing that you should do and try to uh, get accomplished before or while applying for PA school. Another tip that I want to give that go back to all of this before all of this is um, there's a program online that actually has a comparison sheet and that way you can look at all the rec requirements and prerequisites that are, are needed for any school you want to go to so you can use their template uh, Duke University PA program has that on their website uh, other schools may have it also but it's an easy way to do a comparison to see what prerequisites you need how many to, how many hours are needed um, so that's a good way to help in your planning process of what schools you want to go to. GRE. A lot of places, uh, a lot of schools are looking for that as a requirement. Uh, so if you feel that you are a poor test taker or standardized testing gives you some type of anxiety, I would recommend you going to going somewhere that will give you skills on helping you to take tests. That way your GRE scores can be um, above the top in what they're looking for. Um, a lot of schools have a different minimum. Some of them don't have a minimum, uh, but some uh, most places will require it. Let's go to those prerequisites. That's another thing. They really need to be strong. Um, a Lisa B or better is what a lot of places are looking for which gives you a GPA minimum of a 3.0 on a science-based scale. And a lot of uh, schools are also looking for a G, uh, GPA of 3.0 or above in overall courses. So if you see that you've taken a prerequisite <clears throat> and you may have gotten a C, but you want to help uh, strengthen that GPA, go back and take it. Um, go back and take that course, learn from that, and that will also help bring your GPA up. That way you can be seen better. Another tip that I would like to bring out to you is writing skills. Having a strong statement, personal statement, is something where a lot of people, a lot of schools are looking at because that it's really hard to tell, talk about someone or see someone on paper, but when you can look at a narrative and that person is expressing themselves through that personal statement, that is really, really, really I tell you, it puts a lot of people above others just from that personal statement. So get some writing skills. If you don't feel like you have a strong writing background, definitely, definitely do that because it will help uh, strengthen your application and your personality overall. <clears throat> so having that strong personal statement tells the, the reader who you are and they, in a sense, get a way of knowing who you are overall as a person and they're pretty much you're pretty much introducing yourself to individuals through paper so I would through writing so I would definitely 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 strengthen my writing skills this tip that I will say is the most important tip of all um, because this tip allows you to understand who and what a PA does with that being said, I would recommend you shadow a PA in your community. Whether they're in primary care, they're in emergency medicine, they're in surgery, whatever healthcare field they're in, shadow them. That way you as an individual understand what a PA does, our limitations, where we've come from as far as the history of a PA. Um, because a lot of people do not, as long as we've been around, it's 50 years, the, pro the profession is growing, but still a lot of people do not know what a PA does or what our role is in healthcare. So if you could shadow a PA and strongly shadow a PA, you know, a week or two, and getting an idea of what that person does on a day-to-day -day basis <clears throat> in the healthcare system, you will, you will understand why it's important to do everything that I've said before, okay? Um, there are a lot of people trying to get into PA schools now. 
Uh, studies show that it's harder to get into PA school than it is to medical school um, because there are so many applicants out there. There's few there are few schools, uh, but they are growing almost over 230 schools. Again, mine being one that is trying to come back. Uh, so I, I hope you all uh, out there are trying to support Howard because there's some more information coming to that, but we are in the process of trying to get our program back as well. If you can do this, I recommend it if it's only if you can. And what I'm saying is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Be willing to venture out to other schools, locations. And again, I say this if you can. Not everyone can do that. Um, not everyone has the uh, ability to just pick up and leave and go. You have families. You have relationships. So those are things that may keep you into one location that you'll be looking for. But if you can, venture out to other schools. I myself, I went to school in New York, and I'm from Louisiana. And when I say that was a culture shock, but I'm glad I went. Because I, as a person, grew up, um, I learned about culture, <clears throat> I learned about other ethnicities, um, so that in itself helped me and prepared me for PA school, because everybody that you treat will not look like you. So, being able to venture out and be able to pick up and go and applying to other schools that are outside of your comfort zone, that's another tip that I would put out, because it increases your chances also. so much Donnie for sharing those tips my with pleasure. my people out my there. Pleasure. I did have one question for you because I get this question a lot. I know that one of your most important tips was shadowing yes. a PA, um, but from what I've heard, it's hard to shadow a PA. So what do you suggest um, You know, people who are having a hard time finding a PA to shadow do? That's, um, a, that's a really good question. Um, something I would do is I'm pretty sure you may know people who know who may know a PA in a different location. So if you're willing to even travel to a friend's location, or if you know someone that's gotten into PA school, they may know some PAs as well. But you have to be willing to travel. Um, something that I did, I was in Alabama, and I found a friend of mine who knew a PA in California, and I went. So oh, wow. it's. It, it's, so he's talking about really travel, not like you just going 30 minutes outside of your radius. Like you're willing to fly out for a week or two weeks to yeah. actually make the sacrifice because this is what you want to do. Exactly. And when people, sh when you show that, that, hey, you go to an interview and like, listen, I want to be a PA so bad, I traveled 400 miles. I got on a plane and went somewhere. People look at them like, wow, they really want to be a PA. So I would encourage you not to let that be a stumbling block, but you probably have to just venture out a little bit. I'm pretty sure there are, I, I'm not pretty sure, I know there are a lot of blogs, a lot of um, social media websites where you can find out where other PAs may be, but I would not limit myself to just saying, oh, wait, there's no one in my area letting it be a hindrance. Try to find somebody. I really like that because, I mean, I never know what to tell people. I'm like, uh, check LinkedIn and <laughs> see if there's anybody in your area. But that is actually, I mean, you know, if you know somebody out across country, you got to do what you have to do if you really want to be a PA. Yeah. So thank you for that. That's a, I learned something new. So hopefully this was a blessing to you guys. You guys take these tips to heart. Um, you do your research on the schools and you actually like go through with some of these tips that Don you said make sure that you are um, actually aggressive and go after getting those shadowing hours yes, um, yes. I, again I just cannot thank you enough for doing this I know that this is gonna be very helpful to those looking forward to being a PA mm -hmm. um, and hopefully some of you will apply to Howard's program I'm sure um, they will when more information comes <laughs> out about that okay so yes. Um, thank you again, Donnie, so much You're for doing welcome. this. I really appreciate it. If you guys have not seen any of my other videos, go ahead and take a look around my channel. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Like this video. They have to like that. Yes, like they have that. to like this video right yes. now. Um, comment down below with any questions that you may have about <laughs> for Donnie. <laughs> and go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Best interview we ever had. Right the best we ever had. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get edited, but <laughs> I know it was. <laughs>